Hi everybody. In this video we are going to do the main solo and the outro solo to Over the Mountain. Uh, for those of you that have been watching this whole series on this song, uh, you'll remember in the beginning of it we were talking about the tuning. So if you're just watching this video first, go back to the first video and I'll explain the, the tuning a little bit better. Um, we are tuning to the actual album which was not quite in E flat like it was supposed to be. It's somewhere between E flat and E. So I'm going to give you that tuning right now. Here's your low E string somewhere between E flat and E. A string somewhere between A flat and A. Now your guitar should be in tune with itself and if you want to play along with this song and the actual recording you should be in tune with it as well. It was intended to be an E flat again it was about probably the tape machines or possibly the tuning machine that Randy used we'll never know. Okay Randy starts this solo with the 11th fret on the A string, jumps up to the 13th fret on the G string, 12th fret on the D string, and then he adds a couple of notes here. This is going to be 11 9 on the D string. And then he's going to go from the 9th fret on the A string to the 11th fret. Here's what you have slow. Now he's going to go back to the 13th fret to the 12th fret on the D string. Next, Randy's going to slide up to the 16th fret on the G string right before he starts this main lick, which is probably one of the most popular, most famous Randy Rhodes solo that everybody seems to love, one of my personal favorites. It's going to start on the G string, and it's going to go across three strings, the G, the B, and the E, and it's going to be 18, 17, 16. On the high E string, you're going to play 19, 17, 16. Back to the B string, 19. Back to the high E string, 16. Back to the B string, 19, 17, 16. Back to the G string, 18. B string, 16. Back to the G string, 18, 16. Now you're going to reach up to the D string, 19. Back to the 16 on the G. Back to the 19, 18, and 16 on the D string. 16, 18 again. 19 on the A string, back to the 16 on the D, and then he holds the 19, and then 18. Here's that whole phrase, nice and slow. Now he's going to do that twice before moving on to the next set of measures. Okay, okay, so the octave below, before we jump into the next part of it, it's gonna start on the low E string, fourth fret. It's gonna jump up to the D string, sixth fret. A string, fifth fret. And the little fill is gonna go four, two on the A. Two, four on the low E. Comes back up to the sixth fret of the D string. Then the 5th fret of the A string, and he's going to slide all the way up to the 14th fret before he actually starts the phrase. Um, again, it's this one's going to be the same fingering, it's just lower. So it's going to start on the 6th fret, go across the G, B, and high E string. It's going to be 6, 5, and 4. 7, 5, 4 on the high E. 7 on the B. 4 on the high E. Back to the B string, it's going to be 7, 5, 4. Back to the 6 on the G. 4 on the B. 6, 4 on the G. 
7 on the D, back to your G string 4. Now on your D string it's going to go 7, 6, 4, 6, 4, 7 on the A, back to the D string 4th fret, back to the A string 7, and then the, the 6th fret on the A string ends the phrase. So here it is, nice and slow. Play that one a few times and get it under your fingers. I want you to remember the end of that little phrase where he's ending the... It's going to show up again a little bit later in the solo. Okay, moving back into... I was doing the higher part of it. So this, one more time, slow on the high octave. He's going to do that twice. Now we're going to move on to the next measure. Next measure is going to start on the 14th fret of the low E string. It's going to be 14, 16. The A string is going to be 14, 16, 18. Slide. 16, 18 on the D. 16, 18 on the G. And he bends. And this is really quick. He's going to reach all the way up to the 16th fret with his first finger on the high E. 19, 16 on the B. And here's where that bend is, again, on the high E string. It's going to be the 19th fret. He comes back to the 16 on the high E. And this is where he starts to use either the whammy bar or the finger pull kind of thing. Uh, we weren't there to see any of the footage or whatever from him doing it in the studio. We only have the live footage, and the live footage, because he was usually using the less Paul, he's grabbing... A He's just yanking on the B string that way. If you use your whammy bar, it's an up pull. You can go all kinds of crazy with that. So he's going to do the hammer on pull off. It's going to be on the 16th and the 19th fret, regardless of which way you're doing. Now at the end of that phrase, if you ever listen to the, the original song, Nice and Slow, on YouTube, you can hear the two notes at the end of that phrase when he's doing the bends before he starts this next lick. It's written from the book it's written as two ninth fret e really uncomfortable to do that kind of jump and it doesn't really feel like randy um, which is why i'm about to change this next lick but anyway he does the open high e string twice it's really quick and it's kind of quiet in the mix but if you listen close you'll hear that it's there the next lick that he's going to jump into as we were talking about the um, the main part of the solo he's going to do a similar kind of feel to this one and again the original book you can't put this stuff under a microscope because it's not always the same the book has all of these jumps and slides to get all the way down to the fourth fret after starting here that to me doesn't feel like randy at all the way i'm going to show you this it's the exact same notes but it's going to be in a little bit more of a comfortable position so here it is it's going to start on the high e string it's going to be seven eight ten seven eight and then 10 on the B string. Back to the high E7. B string 8, 10. B string 7, 8. G string 9. Back to the B string 7. And here's the G string. It's going to go 9, 7. And you can hear in the original lick that this is where he kind of mutes a little bit. It's not much. But anyway, D string 10th fret. Back to the G string 7. Back to the D string 10. And this is where you're going to add 9, 7, 9, 7 on the D string. Back to the A string, which is going to be your 10th fret. And here's where he's going to jump from the E to the F sharp. So it's going to be 7, 9. Here's that whole phrase, nice and slow, without me interrupting it in the middle of it. As you can see watching my hand, there's not a lot of crazy jumps and skips. And I've watched a lot of people, uh, different videos where they're doing it up higher here and they're jumping down. And to be honest with you, I think they're all kind of right. Um, as long as they're using the same notes and the same kind of phrasing and you can get to it, come up with a comfortable way of your own to do it. it 
Randy would love the fact that we're all playing this in the first place. So we're going to move on to the next lick, the end of that one, after you get to that F sharp, and he kind of does that little bend. A little bit of vibrato there. He hits the actual high E again. Now, I don't know if this was in the original take or one of the other overdub takes, but it's there. He grabs that a little bit early before going into this next phrase. Now, the next phrase, uh, if you've done Crazy Train or anything uh, D, he uses this kind of feel type of fill in a bunch of different places. This one's actually a lot easier. It starts with the high E open and it's going to go 3-2-0, B string 3-2-0, G string 3-2-0, back to the B string 3-2-0, same thing on the high E string, back to the B string, and then the G string he's going to do an extra two notes in here because he's going to grab the whammy bar. As he's coming back up from that bend, he's going to grab the 13th and 14th fret on the G string. So here it is slow. The next measure is going to start with the 15th fret on the B string. It's going to be this nice big bend. And to me, it sounds like he's going kind of crazy with the whammy bar. But keep in mind, my theory about the two tape machines playing different speeds make bends and pick noise change pitch too. So it sounds like a crazy, kind of like you're strangling a cat. He does the quick whammy bar. Either way, you can do it if you want to do it with your fingers. Works either way. Next little phrase. And again, back to all the other people doing these videos, I don't think any of them are really wrong because we weren't in the studio to see it. But the way the book has it, and I'm going to try and follow that, starts on the 10th fret. This whole next phrase is going to be on your B string. It's going to start with 10, 7, and slide to 6. Next one's going to be 9, 6, slide to 5. Next one's going to be 8, 5, slide to 4. Next one's going to be 7, 4, slide to 3. Next one's going to be 6, 3, 2, 5, 2, open. 6, 3, open. 7, 4, open. And then here, the way it's actually tabbed out is the 6th fret on your low E string. He does this gradual bend. And you can hear he jumps a couple of times. When he's pulling up on that that last note there that actually ends the solo so let's go through that last phrase after the bend nice and slow it's actually a lot of fun to kind of play through that one so one more time with that last phrase all on the b string nice and slow That completes the solo in the main section of it. Uh, and again, back to the, the other videos that are all out there, and I've seen some of these guys, they're doing all kinds of different whammy bar things in different places to get that last phrase to sound similar. By all means, come up with your own way that's comfortable and what sounds right to you. Uh, I'm just trying to follow the book here, and that seems like a comfortable phrase to me. So now we're going to move all the way up to the outro of the song and it's going to start with the same phrase that the main part of this solo started with. Okay so the outro is going to start all the way up on the 13th fret of your G string and it's going to be the exact same pattern as as the earlier ones in the song. So it's going to start on the 13th fret uh, on the G string, and it's going to go across three strings again, G, B, and E. It's going to be 13, 12, 11. High E string, 14, 12, 11. 14 on your B. 
back to 11 on your high E. B string, 14, 12, 11. 13 on your G. Back to the B string, 11. 13, 11 on your G. 14 on your D. Back to the 11 on the G. And here's where it's going to do the 14, 13, 11 on your D string. Back to 13, 11. 14 on the A. 11 on the D. 14 on the A. And then the very last note will be the 13. So here's the whole phrase, nice and slow. And again, he's going to go through that one twice before moving on to the next measure. So now the ending of that solo, being that you're already right here on the 13th fret, Randy chose the 11th fret on the A string to start this next little run. It's going to be 11, 13, 14 on the A string, 11, 13, 14 on the D, 11, 13 on the G, and then on your B string, it's going to be a trill on the 11th and 12th fret. He finishes the phrase back on the G string, 13th fret. Next measure is going to start up on the high E string, and it's going to be 14, 12, 11. 14, 12, 11 on the B. Now on the G string, he's going to play three notes with a quick bend. And again, if you go back to the original recording and listen to this, even at a super slow speed, it's not all that easy to hear where he's actually ending this phrase. He's going to go to the next measure and the very ending of the, the solo. And he's going to bend on the high E string, 19, back to the 16 on the high E, 19 on the B, back to the 16 on the high E, and then he's going to bend the 19 on the B one more time, and he vibrato, and he lets this run over the actual ending chords of the song. Ba -da -dum. That is the complete outro to this solo. It is not one of Randy's uh, difficult pieces, but it is a lot of fun to play. If you take your time and get a couple of these licks under your fingers, you're never going to forget them. First time I learned a couple of these, uh, I was 12, and I still remember them. So enjoy. I hope you had a good time with this video series, and I'll see you in the next video.